Well, rail workers are to stage a fresh nationwide strike in the dispute over pay, jobs and conditions. They're threatening travel chaos at the height of the summer holidays. Train drivers at eight rail companies will walk out on Saturday the 30th of July, marking the first coordinated industrial action by them since 1995. And of course, it comes after the RMT union, which uh, presents, uh, represents other uh, train staff, uh, saying that it will strike on Wednesday the 27th of July and also over two days in August. Well, we can talk now to our next guest, uh, Mick Whelan, uh, who uh, is the uh, General Secretary of uh, ASLEF, uh, joins us now from Tollpuddle in Dorset. Uh, every year there's a festival to mark the Tollpuddle martyrs who, of course, paved the way for the trade union uh, movement. Thank you very much for being uh, on the programme. Um, just talk us through what strike action you're planning and the impact that it could have on commuters and people who need to use the trains. Well, quite obviously, when train drivers don't uh, come to work, trains don't run, so there'll be virtually no services in those areas. And that saddens us. We'd much rather be talking to people to find a way out of this, but unfortunately, no-one's coming to the table. What is the strike about? What pay rise are you looking for? We haven't put an exact figure on it, but most people don't understand that nobody in the railway industry has had a pay rise for three years. So in two years of pandemic, um, we were key workers, people were frauding us, we were getting other key workers to work. We were moving food and medicine around the country. Um, and when RPI was a lot lower, uh, the pressure wasn't so much on. But now we're in year three, and the cost of living crisis is hitting all workers. And we're not seeing just train drivers, but we're seeing people in CWU, the post. We're seeing barristers. We're seeing all sections now saying, enough is enough. Uh, you say you don't want to put an exact uh, figure on the pay rise that you're looking for. Um, inflation, of course, is at around 9.1%. Uh, Are you looking for a pay rise to match and keep pace with inflation? We'd like that. Standing still isn't greed. Standing still is standing still. And of course, we wouldn't even be standing still because we're not looking retrospectively for the pay rises we didn't get in the previous two years. We're saying this year, everybody deserves a pay rise. But you won't put any figure on, on what that would be? Well, it's incredibly difficult for us because, as you know, we're, we're a fractionalised industry. You said it's eight companies. By the time we finish, there'll probably be 13. Uh, they've all got different terms and conditions. They all work differently geographically. And they've all got different needs. And, you know, we don't work for the government. We don't work for the DFT. And we don't work for the Treasury. We work for Arriva and Trentalia and all of these private companies. And they've all been making profits throughout the pandemic. And they're making profits now. And it seems counterintuitive to us that they're paying their shareholders and taking money out of the UK to fund state railways elsewhere while we can't get pay rise internally. What's the current median salary for a train driver? Roughly about £59,000. Because I guess for a lot of our viewers, they might think that is actually already quite a lot of money. And probably to a lot of people it is. And I look at other workers and think they should have what we have. But every time I ask the question, if we don't get it, will you give 22% to the nurses? Will you give it to the fire brigades to bring them up? Will you bring it to other public sector workers? And it's not an exhaustive list because there's so many people who deserve a proper living and a proper pay rise. You know, it goes very, very quiet. So we don't enter into this politics of envy uh, debate. For us, it's about everybody's entitled to a pay rise. Everybody should be on the standard that we have. But do you think that some, if we're talking about prioritising, do you think that people on lower income should be prioritised for pay rises? Yes, and in the public sector, that's down to the government. We are actually still in the private sector. There may be legislation coming for Great British Railways and may come back in-house, but at this moment in time, what's actually happened is quite slightly duplicitous. The companies have done a deal with the government not to offer us more than 2%. We go to the company say that's not enough. The companies say, well, we can't offer any more than the government won't let us. We go to the government they say you've got to talk to the employers. So we're in this wonderful catch-22 situation where they've done a deal, um, actually smashing free collective bargaining, I mean, it may even be illegal, uh, and put us into this place where we've got no, no place else to go. I just want to talk to you about the Labour Party, uh, if I may. Uh, at your uh, AGM in May, um, Asla voted to remain affiliated to the Labour Party, but you noted that there is a measure of disquiet with the direction of the party. What exactly did you mean by that? I think there's a lot of traditionalists who would like to see occasionally Labour stand up and stand with workers more regularly. Um, we do believe it's the best game in town for working people in the UK. But we have to put the offer out there. We have to show that we're different. And we have to show that we have the plans for the recovery, for the future, and for that just green transition that should create those high-paid quality jobs that people need. So do you think that Labour, frankly, aren't doing enough to show they're on the same side as working people? I see an awful lot of work that is done behind the scenes. So I do see that there is a massive amount being done. I just think so occasionally we should communicate more.
OK, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mick Whelan there uh, of uh, Aslev, thank you for coming on the programme today. Thank you.